What I'd like to do is I'd like to be able to set up a database. And I'd like to be able to use the data that I've already stored in my address book as a starting point. The example for this database is the database I would like to have for keeping track of my possible interviewees for my podcasts. It could be for Video 20 Questions or Mac 20 Questions or one of the other podcasts. And the people I've met could be from various places, either from Facebook or Twitter or wherever else. How we're going to do this is by linking the data in the address book to Bento. And this is because in Bento we can also put in the details that we have got stored in iCal or in Apple Mail. To get this started, what I've done is I've entered the details of four people into address book to help me identify those four contacts that I've recently put in there for this podcast. What I've done in the notes field is to put in a keyword. In this case, Bento Podcast. So when I do a search in all contacts, let's just put all contacts in that part there. So you can see that the search has given me these four contacts here. Now I could go to the file menu and create a smart group from the current search, but we're not going to do that because I found it easier to do it in Bento. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a smart collection. So we're going to tell the search to display any records that match the following conditions. And in this example, we're going to tell it to look into the note field and look for any records that have the keyword Bento Podcast. Obviously, you can put in whatever keyword you'd like to put in. And to make sure that Bento remembers the search is to click on the button for Save. So now we have our Smart Collection, and that's going to be updated each time we put in the keyword when we're updating a contact in Address Book. Let's just give this collection a title, and we'll call it Bento Podcast as well. So now that we've organized our collection, we can click on this button to hide this pane here. We have a thumbnail view available to us. Not terribly useful though. As you can see in the overview form, some of the fields have already been brought into the form for us. And it's already applied a theme to it too. We can change the theme to any other theme that's available. Maybe would like a sunset. Or we could have the black view. A bit dark looking perhaps, I think. Or we can take one of the pretty little things that's available too. I don't think so somehow. Okay then, we'll use this one just because it's nice and easy to see. So there's another form as well called Details and we can change the theme in that one as well if we want to. And this time you can see that we're using a different dialog box to choose a theme, but we're doing the same thing exactly. Well that's not showing up quite so well, so let's go back to the theme chooser again. Okay, we'll go for that one, it's just as good as any other. So let's go to the overview form and what we're going to try and do is get as many of our details just into one form. So we're going to want to get a few more details on there and we can actually create some new fields. So for instance, I have made one already and it's called Twitter One. And I'm going to place this just here. And we have Twitter Two, just in case the person has more than one Twitter name. And let's put in the URL to that person's website. Let's just move that out of the way. We don't need that at the moment. We have the address list in here. There doesn't seem to be any choices. The different parts of the address field, we have to have all of it. So we have all the standard address fields in there. And if you change anything on here, it'll also be changed in the address book too. We can change the size if we want to. We can make it smaller or larger. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to be able to keep a track of the emails that have come from this person as well. So let's create a field and click on Messages. And we're going to call it Messages. You just have to remember that it has to be a unique name. So something not used before in your database. So maybe we could call it Emails. We'll click on Create and Continue. And so we're going to bring in some related data as well. And this time we're going to bring in the data from iCal. And we'll call this one Events. So obviously in this case the data source is going to be in iCal. This time we're going to click on the button Create. Okay, so Emails. There it is, look. So let's just drag this into here. So let's move this to get a bit more room, a little bit more space. 
move that there. That's our note field, made a little bit smaller. So as you can see, it's very easy to make these boxes align. We're not going to need the priority field in there, so let's hide that one. I don't think in this case we're going to need the sender in there either, so let's hide that too. So we'll change the size of the field for subject and just bring that out a little bit there. So there's our emails in our form. So now let's bring in our other related data, and this time it's coming in from iCal Events. So first of all, let's bring some of the emails onto the form. And here we have the ones for Ben Jackson. So you can see we have two emails there from Ben Jackson. So let's just drag them and drop them in there. And get back into Bento. If I want to have a closer look at some of these emails while I'm in Bento, I just click on this button here. It does the same as if I was to use Quick Look by pressing the space bar. So let's have a quick look in events. Let's see if I have any events in there that are to do with Ben Jackson. So you can see in this example, I have set up a iCal event to talk to Ben Jackson on the 18th of February. So we'll add that to the list. So talk to Ben Jackson, and let's just change the size of that a little bit. We need a little bit more room. Let's just move that over. If we select all of these areas here, we can change the size of them all at the same time. So now if I select this one and click on that there, and we're opened up in Apple Mail. How cool is that? And another thing that I might want to do is go to the home page. So I just click on that and go to location. Or if I want to, I can edit the URL. If I want to, I can click on this button here and it will start a new email to this recipient. So let's just go back into Bento again. So there you go, we've got our details from address book, we've got our emails in there, and we've got our events in there. It's looking pretty good. Obviously there are other information that I want in there too. I might want to know which podcast that this person is destined for. I can keep this database and have it for people that's going to be on Mac 20 questions or on Video 20 questions or one of the other podcasts. In this case I've created a drop down type of field and all I need to do is to choose one of the things I've already put in there. Mac 20 questions and perhaps this person is also a video maker for video 20 questions so you can see I've set it up so you just choose from a list another thing that I might need to know for this database is when the podcast has been completed or the interview has been completed so I can put in a checkbox type of field another good thing for me to know is to know where I made first contact perhaps it's from Facebook or it could be from Twitter in this case, it was an email about the application Blogo. We'll just leave that, that size. So I can put a check mark in this box here when I've completed the podcast. And I shall know that I don't need to do anything more with this particular contact in this database. So there you go. You can see how easy it is to get all your information on one form. That picture there, I can only change while I'm in address book. So let's drag and drop a picture into there. I'll click on set the picture. So now when I go back to Bento, we'll see the picture is updated there for Fred Bassett. Obviously, better if it's an actual picture of the person rather than the picture of a camera like I've chosen here, but there you go. So now I have a database set up with all the information that I require to be able to keep track of the people that I've said they're going to be in one of my podcasts.